Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Limit Maths. In this video, we'll be discussing the mean inequality chain, which is an inequality that concerns the root mean square, the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean, and the harmonic mean of a set of real numbers. So the inequality states that the root mean square is always greater than or equal to the arithmetic mean, which is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean, which is always greater than or equal to the harmonic mean of a set of real numbers. So to define these terms, the root mean square is the square root of the arithmetic mean of the squares of n numbers. So we can write this as the square root of the quantity x1 squared plus x sub 2 squared, so on until x sub n squared, all over n. And we know that this is always greater than or equal to the arithmetic mean, which is just the average of a set of n numbers. And this is always going to be greater than or equal to the geometric mean, which is the nth root of the product of these n numbers. And further, the geometric mean is always greater than or equal to the harmonic mean, which is the reciprocal of the average of n Reciprocals. So if you had n reciprocals, 1 over x sub 1 plus 1 over x sub 2, so on until 1 over x sub n, and you took their average, and now finally if you take the reciprocal of this value, you get the harmonic mean for that set of n numbers. So this is the mean inequality chain. We'll be looking at the proof of this inequality, and then we'll go into some nice contest problems that involve this mean inequality chain. So the first part of the proof of the mean inequality chain is to prove that the root mean square is always greater than or equal to the arithmetic mean of a set of n numbers. So to do this, we're going to work backwards, which essentially means that we're going to start at our desired inequality, and we're going to manipulate it in such a way that we end up at a, tr at a statement that we know to be true. And this is, this is the way that we're going to find the proof, but if we were to actually write the proof, we would have to start at the true statement and then manipulate that statement to end up at our desired inequality. Okay, so to work backwards on this inequality, let's take the let's square both sides to get rid of the square root. So doing that, we get x sub 1 squared plus x sub 2 squared, so on until x sub n squared, all over n, is greater than or equal to x1 plus x2, so on until x sub n, all over n, quantity squared. So now if we multiply both sides by n squared, then we end up with n times x sub 1 squared plus x sub 2 squared, so on until x sub n squared. And we know that this is greater than, or, and we're trying to show that this is greater than or equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2, so on until x sub n quantity squared. Okay, so now how do we proceed with this? Well, if you're familiar with the cauchy schwarz inequality, this looks a lot like that inequality. So the cauchy schwarz inequality states that if you have two sequences, a1, a2, a until an, and b1, b2, so on until bn, then you have a1 squared plus a2 squared, so on until a n squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared so on until b n squared is greater than or equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 so on until a n b n quantity squared. Okay, so notice the similarity between these two, this statement that we arrived at from our desired inequality and this cauchy schwarz inequality, but there is but there's this problem of there's two sequences here in the cauchy schwarz inequality, whereas here we only see this one sequence of x sub 1, x sub 2, so on until x sub n. So how do we deal with that? Well, notice that if we just let each of the b1, b2 until bn be 1, so we have 1, 1, so on until 1, all of these, we have n ones basically, then on, on this this product becomes 1 squared plus 1 squared, so on until we have n 1 squareds, right? And this, the right-hand side, becomes a1 times 1 plus a2 times 1 plus so on until a n times 1 squared. So now if we write our new inequality, after substituting in this sequence for b1, b2 until bn, we arrive at a1 squared plus a2 squared, so on until a n squared times, and notice that this series of 1 squareds just evaluates to n because we have n 1 squareds, 
is greater than or equal to a1 plus a2 plus so on until an squared because these a1 times 1, a2 times 1 just about to a1, a2 and so on. And we know that this statement is true because of the cauchy schwarz inequality. So therefore by using the cauchy schwarz inequality we've shown that the root mean square of a set of n numbers is always greater than or equal to the arithmetic mean of that set of n numbers. So essentially we've worked backwards. We've manipulated this desired inequality to arrive at a true statement, which is the, which is this statement that we know to be true by cauchy schwarz And so if we were to actually write this proof, we would start with, we would start with this true statement at the bottom here. Then we would say that that's true because of the cauchy schwarz inequality. Then we would divide by n squared to arrive at this statement over here. And then notice that we can just simply take the square root of both sides without actually affecting the greater than or equal to sign because both sides of this inequality are non-negative. So taking the square root won't change this greater than or equal to sign at all. So because all our steps are reversible, we can essentially work backwards from this desired inequality to show that the root mean squared is always greater than or equal to the arithmetic mean. Let's move on to the next part, which is proving that the arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to the geometric mean of a set of n numbers. Okay, moving on to the next part. Now for the AMGM inequality, I'm only going to be showing it for the n equals 2 case for the sake of time. I'm only going to be showing it for the n equals 2 case for the sake of time because, because the general case for n terms is beyond the scope of this video, but I'll leave a link to that proof in the description and I encourage you to try it for the n equals 3, n equals 4, and even maybe the general case for n terms. So for the n equals 2 case, we want to show that x1 plus x2 over 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of x1, x2. And we're going to follow the same approach as last time, meaning we're going to work backwards. And then we're going to show that all our steps are reversible to, to essentially show that the proof is valid. right? So working backwards, we can multiply both sides by 2. x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 2 root x1, x2. And now we can square both sides is greater than or equal to 4x1, x2. Expanding the left-hand side, we get x1 squared plus x2 squared plus 2x1, x2 is greater than or equal to 4x1, x2. And now let's go, now, now, and now let's subtract 4x1, x2 from both sides. So we get x1 squared minus 2x1, x2 plus x2 squared is greater than or equal to zero. And now we can factor this left-hand side into x1 minus x2 squared is greater than or equal to zero. And we, and we know that this statement is true, right? Because of the trivial inequality. The trivial inequality states that for any real number x, x squared is always greater than or equal to zero. So if we make the substitution that x equals x1 minus x2, then this statement holds true. So all these steps are reversible, which means that we can essentially take this inequality, work backwards, and manipulate it so that we arrive at this desired inequality, which is the our AMGM for two, uh, for n equals two. Then we've essentially shown that the proof is valid and that AMGM does indeed hold for the n equals two case. Now the general case for n terms is a lot more complex, but I encourage you to try it out on your own. Okay, so the final part of the mean inequality chain proof is to show that the geometric mean is always greater than or equal to the harmonic mean. Now we don't know much about this harmonic mean on the right, but we do know that it's the reciprocal of the arithmetic mean of the numbers 1 over x sub 1, 1 over x sub 2, so on, until 1 over x sub n. So if we take the reciprocal of this value, then we'll arrive at the harmonic mean. And because now we know that the arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean, we can say that this value is always greater than or equal to the nth root of 1 over x sub 1 times 1 over x sub 2 so until 1 over x sub n, right? And we can simplify this value on the right as the 1 over the nth root of x sub 1 times x sub 2, so on until x sub n. So the, the inequality we have now is that 1 over x sub 1 plus 1 over x sub 2 until 1 over x sub n, all over n, is always greater than or equal to 1 over the nth root of x sub 1, x sub 2, so on until x sub n. Okay, so how do we proceed from here? Well, notice that both sides of the inequality are positive at all times. 
So this means that if we take the reciprocal of both sides, then we'll end up uh, flipping the greater than or equal to sign to a less than or equal to sign. So if we do that, we get n over 1 over x sub 1 plus 1 over x sub 2 plus so on until 1 over x sub n is always less than or equal to the nth root of x sub 1 times x sub 2, so on until x sub n. And notice that this is exactly what we wanted to prove. We wanted to show that the harmonic mean is always less than or equal to the geometric mean. And so this completes our proof for the mean inequality chain. Let's take a look at some competition problems now to see how we can apply this. So our first problem is to find the maximum value of x squared y if x plus y equals 6 and x is greater than or equal to 0. So seeing this x plus y over here makes us think of the AMGM inequality. So if we apply AMGM to x plus y directly, we have x plus y over 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of xy. But notice that we have an xy in the geometric mean, whereas what we really want to have is x squared y. So we could try to work around this by having two x terms in the arithmetic mean. Now this gives us x plus x plus y over 3 is greater than or equal to the cube root of x squared y. But now there's another problem, which is that we have 2x two, two plus y in the arithmetic mean, and we have no idea what 2x plus y is. We only know what x plus y is. So we still want to take the arithmetic mean of x plus y, but we want the geometric mean to include x squared y. So the only way we could do this is if we have x over 2 plus x over 2 plus y. If we take the arithmetic mean of these three numbers, then in the geometric mean, we're left with the cube root of x over 2 times x over 2 times y. And this is essentially the same as the cube root of x squared y over 4, right? Okay, and on the left, we have x plus y over 3. And we know that this is greater than or equal to the cube root of x squared y over 4. So now let's just substitute x plus y, which we know is 6, is greater than or equal to x squared y over 4. So 2 is greater than or equal to the cube root of x squared y over 4. If we cube both sides and multiply by 4, we get 8 times 4 is greater than or equal to x squared y. So we know that x squared y is less than or equal to 32, which means that the maximum value that x squared y can achieve is 32, and we're done. All right, so in this problem, we have a and b positive real numbers such that a plus b equals 1, and we want to find the minimum of this expression. So to make computation a lot easier for us, let's let x equal a plus 1 over a, y equal b plus 1 over b. So now essentially we want to find the minimum of x squared plus y squared. Now seeing these square terms over here makes us think of the root mean square. And if you remember from our mean inequality chain, we have that the root mean square of any two numbers is always greater than or equal to the arithmetic mean of, that, of those two numbers. So if you apply this directly to x squared plus y squared, we have the square root of x squared plus y squared over 2 is always greater than or equal to x plus y over 2. Let's square both sides. x squared plus y squared over 2 is greater than or equal to x plus y quantity squared over 4. And now we can just multiply both sides by 2. x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to x plus y squared over 2. Okay, so now we've arrived at the quantity that we wanted to minimize, right? So we can go ahead and plug in our original values for x and y. So we have a plus 1 over a squared plus b plus 1 over b squared is greater than or equal to 1 half. Now x is just a plus 1 over a, and y is b plus 1 over b. And this whole quantity is going to be squared. Since we want to minimize the term on the left, we also want to minimize this term on the right, because the term on the left is always greater than or equal to the term on the right. We can rewrite the right-hand side as 1 half times this a plus b part. If you remember, we were given that a plus b is 1, so this just becomes 1. And now 1 over a plus 1 over b simplifies to a plus b over ab. And since we want to minimize this expression, we want to, we want to maximize ab and we want to minimize a plus b. So if you remember from the mean inequality chain, another inequality was the AMGM inequality which stated that a plus b over 2 is always greater than or equal to the square root of ab. If we, take, if we square both sides and multiply by 4, we get a plus b squared is greater than or equal to 4ab. And since we're given that a plus b is 1, we have 1 is greater than or equal to 4ab. 
So 1 over 4 is always greater than or equal to AB, which tells us that the maximum value that AB can achieve is 1 over 4. So now we've maximized AB so that this quantity on the right is as small as possible. So if we plug in our value for AB now, we get A plus 1 over A quantity squared plus B plus 1 over B quantity squared is always greater than or equal to 1 half times 1 plus and now a plus b over ab becomes 1 over 1 over 4 because a plus b is 1 and ab is 1 over 4 and this whole quantity is squared as well. Okay, so the right hand side we can simplify to 1 half times 1 plus 4 squared which simplifies to 25 over 2. So the minimum possible value that a plus 1 over a squared plus b plus 1 over b squared can achieve is 25 over 2 and we're done. And that concludes this video. I hope you found it helpful. As always, you can use the request form for video requests. And thanks for watching. Bye.